Hi everyone, welcome back. I mean, first of all, if you hear the wind, rain, or James streaming next door in this video, I can only apologize. There's quite a lot of noise going on around me. I'm hoping that it won't pick up on my microphone because it doesn't always, but we'll see. So the other day I posted a TikTok and I also posted it on my Instagram Reels and also on YouTube Shorts. And it was all about how lighting can drastically change the appearance of your makeup. And I have posted similar videos in the past. I've also seen quite a lot of other people talk about this on TikTok. There was one girl in particular called Josie Peaches who shows this quite often. And just every once in a while, I like to put out this reminder that what you see on camera in TikTok creators, Instagrammers, YouTubers, influencers or whatever, what you see on camera a lot of the time is not actually what everything looks like in real life because we are constantly surrounded by big lights and good camera equipment and I mean a lot of people also as well use filters. I personally don't use filters on my content like blurring filters and stuff like that but a lot of people do that as well which only adds to the problem and so today I thought I would sit down and do my everyday makeup routine but in every type of lighting. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with my softbox lights on that I use for filming. I'm going to show you what it looks like in natural lighting. I'm also going to show you what it looks like in a regular sort of light from above that you would just have in a room without having these blinding lights pointing at you because I think it's important and a lot of people are insecure about their skin. I am one of those people. I used to be really insecure about my skin when I was younger and I feel like if I'd have had videos like this it would have made me feel a lot better and don't get me wrong like I am speaking myself from a pretty privileged position because my skin at the moment is relatively clear. I am going to give you close-ups of my skin however because the way that it's looking right now obviously I'm further back from the camera. I've got two big lights on me and I'm going to show you the real up close of my skin just in case it helps anybody out there because my skin right now might look like it's perfect but that is partly down to the lighting. So I'm going to film myself doing my makeup just using the natural light from outside so you can see what that looks like. I will then show you the difference what it looks like with my soft boxes on and I will show you the difference what it looks like out in my hallway. And so if you are looking at people online and thinking why does my skin not look that smooth? A big part of that could be down to the lighting and obviously people are just trying to make themselves look the best that they possibly can on camera. So let me just give you a quick close-up of my skin with my lights on and then I'm going to turn them off. Okay, so I washed my skin about half an hour ago. How am I already starting to get a little bit of oil like around here? I've got oily skin. I also have dry patches and at the moment I've got a nice big dry patch here and this is what my skin is looking like with my lights on and also with the exposure of my camera turned up. So let me just turn that down because that also makes a difference. So this is with that turned down and... I think you can actually see a pretty good indication of what my skin looks like. You can see that I have this sort of inflamed dry patch here which is a little bit of an eczema flare up. On this side I've got a few scars. I am a picker. I always squeeze my spots and then they leave scars on my face. I also need to comb my eyebrows. And if I get real up close and personal you can see that I have some peach fuzz on my face here like little hairs. I've got pretty enlarged pores around my cheeks and on my nose. These pores are a little bit bigger. And my forehead is pretty smooth in general. I have a few little sort of blackheads and bits, but even these little like blackhead, like clogged pores kind of areas, these still pick up in certain lightings, but not at all when you're slightly from a distance and especially using like a front camera of a phone, they don't really pick up at all. So now I'm gonna turn off my softbox lights and we're just gonna use the natural light to do my makeup for the rest of this video. Okay, wow, well, we're gonna have to increase the brightness on my camera. So this is just the natural light from my window. I am going to have to turn up the uh, ISO of my camera just to make things look a little bit brighter so that more light gets into the lens. But as you can see in the natural light, even just having off my soft boxes, all of the flaws on my face become a lot more obvious. My skin doesn't look as glowy because I've not got lights coming from either side. You can see a little bit more of its texture. You can see more of the redness because the lights aren't washing it out as much. So this is my skin. I mean, it's still looking pretty good. I'm happy with how my skin is at the moment. I've just got like a few sort of blemishes around here. It's not too bad. But as you can see, that texture on my forehead becomes a little bit more apparent when I'm in the natural light. And then same with the pores on my nose, this little dry patch down here that's a little bit irritated, and these little hairs as well that I have on the side of my face. It actually feels kind of cosy in this lighting because it's not as like overexposed. I'm just going to shuffle myself forward a bit so that I make use of the full light from the window because I'm not going to lie, it's a really, I picked the worst possible day to film this. It is gloomy and grey outside and the, the sky is basically just a big grey cloud. Also as well, sometimes the makeup that I do on camera is a bit more exaggerated, like if I'm contouring my nose or something or my cheeks I will do a little bit more heavy contour just so that it shows up a bit better because my lights are so bright but I'm so glad that that video kind of helped a few people and I kind of thought that most people knew that but obviously a lot of people don't know that because not everybody shows their skin in natural light they don't always disclose if they're using filters they don't always talk about their lighting setup and people might just think that people have got perfect skin that they're seeing on Instagram so I just put on some of the vitamin brightening serum from ITK and if you are wanting your makeup to look smoother one thing that I would massively recommend 
is to moisturize before you do your makeup, whether you've got oily skin or whether you've got dry skin. If you've got oily skin, just use a more lightweight moisturizer. But if you just put your makeup onto dry, freshly washed skin, a lot of the time that will emphasize your texture more. You've just got to find a moisturizer that works for you. I really like this one, which is the Versed Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. I spoke about this in my 2022 favorites. But yeah, as you can see, even in the natural light from back here, like my skin looks pretty good, right? It looks really good. But then when you actually zoom in, the flaws are still there. I just don't always film this close up to my face, but I haven't got no issues with showing you how my skin naturally is. And if it makes anyone feel any better, like I get hairs on the side of my face, I will show you later under different lighting and see how they're even more obvious when it's not the natural light. And when I'm under some other lights, you can see the hairs on the side of my face. I also get hair around my mouth, like on my top lip, which I'm pretty sure 90% of people do get. I've got this little like um, shaving device or I use one of those like flip out eyebrow razors. The size of my face, I tend to leave them. During lockdown, I did do like the whole shaving your face um, dermaplaning kind of thing. But I didn't really like the way that it felt because the hairs on my face are a little bit thicker. Some people have got none. Some people have got really fine peach hair. Some people have got thicker hair that's lighter. Some people have got thicker hair that's dark. All of those things are so common. And mine is lighter hair, so you can't see it as much, but it is a little bit thicker than your average peach fuzz. And so that I found when I started um, shaving mine, it just felt really stubbly. Whereas some people are like, oh, I shaved my face and it's not stubbly at all. I found that when I started shaving it, it it felt stubbly so I stopped doing that and I'm not really that bothered by it to be honest because it is such a normal thing but I know that a lot of people are insecure about it which I'm not saying that it's wrong for being insecure about it I'm not saying that it's wrong for you to not be insecure about it what I'm just trying to say is that it is very very normal and I think people make it into more of a big thing than it is and I wish that people would not comment on it ever about anyone because it is a natural part of being a human being today I'm going to use the collection hydro serum foundation this is a pretty nice one I've got the shade seven biscuit this is a pretty nice drugstore foundation you know i do find that i do get oily throughout the day with it but as long as i use like a setting spray and i touch up with a bit of powder throughout the day then it's generally fine and also as well something about celebrities and their skin if you ever want to feel a little bit better about your skin because maybe you've seen i don't know like a supermodel like take kendall jenner for example absolutely stunning person i think kendall jenner is gorgeous but a lot of celebrities do photoshop their pictures or they'll edit out little blemishes or any skin texture have a little look on getting images or any of the sort of like photography pages that take pictures of celebrities and look at the close-ups of their skin. 90% of the time their skin is not as smooth as it appears on their Instagram because obviously when people are posting their own pictures they want to show off the best versions of themselves right and so if they get a bad paparazzi picture that shows that their skin isn't quite perfect they more than likely are not going to post it and also a lot of celebrities as well have people that will professionally photoshop their pictures or they will do it themselves which is obviously part of the problem and I'm in no way trying to shame these women for having skin texture or acne or facial hair or fine lines, wrinkles, dryness, any of the above, because that is all normal things. But it just frustrates me that they feel the need to Photoshop out those things that are so normal. But in a way, I do get it because I know that people that are so much in the public eye, they would have had so many comments about them. And I remember when well, there was one time Kendall was paparazzi without any makeup on and it was at the time when she was going through some acne. She got ripped apart. So it's kind of like, no wonder she wants to not show that side of herself on Instagram. And as well as that, I think that some people forget that a lot of celebrities are getting like weekly facials, they'll get like fillers or laser treatments on their skin and all of these sort of expensive skincare products, skincare treatments. And I mean, I'm not saying that every single celebrity does that, but a lot of them do, which obviously they are gonna have better skin. And then some of them are just naturally blessed. Some people don't have any skin texture and those people are incredibly lucky. Trying to find a picture of Hailey Bieber in recent years where her skin has not looked good is actually really difficult. Her skin is gorgeous, but 90% of people do not have skin that smooth and that is okay. I just used a bit of the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer in the shade Ivory. So this is how we're looking so far. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with how my skin is looking. Um, what should I use today? You know what? I'm going to use this. The Revolution Eye Bright Concealer in the shade Deep Caramel for my contour. And also as well, growing up, I did have worse skin than I do now. And I'm now 25, about to turn 26. I think I've just put way too much on of that, haven't I? I kind of forgot how dark it is. And my skin was definitely a lot worse when I was a teenager. I went to the doctor and I got this stuff. I can't even remember what it was. It was some kind of lotion that I had to put all over my face, which definitely helped with my spots, but it also majorly dried out my skin. But I used to get loads of spots on my forehead. I also used to get them on my cheek. 
weeks. Ah, oh, that was way too much. But it's all part of life, you know? Some people are just blessed and they don't get acne, but a lot of people do. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> Even though I've been doing my makeup for so long, I still make mistakes like I have just now. My makeup does not always look perfect. Sometimes I go out and I've not put that much effort into it. And then people ask me what I do and I'm like, oh, I make YouTube videos about makeup. And I'm thinking like, they're really gonna look at my makeup and inspect it right now and think, you should not be doing that. But I've not always got the time to sit down and make myself look like the best version of myself possible and do my best makeup techniques and take loads of time on it because that's just not realistic, you know? I don't have time to do that every day. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot how uh, dark that contour is and now I look like a muddy mess. But it's okay, it can be fixed, it can be fixed, nothing's been set yet. I'm just gonna take a little bit more concealer. Also, another thing I wanna say as well is that if you do have skin texture or acne or you've got dry patches on your skin or you've got eczema or you've got blemishes or big pores or blackheads or things that you are insecure about, I can promise you that I don't think I have ever looked at somebody and thought they've got dry patches on their skin or oh, they've got big pores or oh, they've got acne, because I don't really notice it on other people. I think we just notice our insecurities mostly on ourselves. But if you think back and how you look at other people, like you don't really look at people and see those things because when you're talking to them, you're either looking at their eyes or you're looking at how you like their hair or you're thinking that they've got a cool outfit or you're just listening to their conversation and not really looking, you're not like inspecting every aspect of their skin. Or I know for me personally anyway, I don't do that. And I've had friends in the past that have been like really insecure, for example, of their nose and have wanted to get a nose job and I'm like I have never once looked at your nose and thought you need a nose job like I never even noticed anything wrong with their nose because they are more focused on their insecurities I think everyone else is more focused on their own insecurities than other people's so what you might be self-conscious about the likelihood is other people might not even notice about you I'm gonna use this one which is by Made by Mitchell it's in pink links this is my favorite at the moment it has a bit of shimmer in it kind of reminds me a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Thing. I do find that this works best when you blend it with a brush though instead of a sponge because it is a little bit more of like a sticky sort of formula. I really like it. How pretty is that? Also as well, I have these lines on my face like um if anybody else gets these and you're insecure about them, I have got lines that come from the inner corner of my eye across my cheek. Um, I can't remember what these are called. I'm not talking about my eye like sockets here. I mean like this line that runs across here. And also, obviously, I have quite pronounced smile lines, which I used to be incredibly insecure of. And at one point, I was going to get them filled, like, with filler. I didn't end up doing that. I've spoken about this before, but one thing, like, I put on a little bit of weight and my face filled out a little bit, little bit more. Also, I started putting less makeup in my smile lines, which made them less obvious. For my powder, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me uh, Loose Powder. I've got the shade 05 Fair. I was buying this on Amazon before, because you can only get this one in America. But somebody told me on TikTok that apparently Maybelline is discontinuing this powder. Which if they do, I'm going to be so upset about because it is such a good powder. Before I put my powder on, I'm just re-blending my concealer. Taking a powder puff, dipping into some of that. Just pressing that in to try and avoid any creases. A major thing as well is when people are like putting on powder on TikTok or on Instagram or whatever, it looks like it's kind of completely got rid of your pores. A lot of the time that is just due to the fact that your front camera on your phone isn't the best quality and in that kind of lighting, it kind of can look like it's got rid of your pores but it's mostly because it takes away the shine and the areas on camera that have got less shine on them don't pick up as much texture because there's less light on that part of the face and so it can look very blurred. And don't get me wrong, powder definitely helps. I find that powder helps my skin texture in real life. I'll give you a close-up of this in a sec. Actually, this powder is a bit light. Let me get out of the darker shade. I'm going to use Fairlight instead just because I don't have a bit of tan on at the moment. And this one is kind of washing me out a little bit. After powder in natural light, this is how my skin is looking. So you can see, like, you can still see a tiny bit of that texture on my forehead round about here. It has not erased my pores, but it's definitely helped them. And it's not got rid of the texture, but it has improved it. But yeah, look, you can still see here. My lips are now super dry, so I'm just going to put on a bit of this lip dew from Vive. This is the Rosa one. Oh, <laughs> I'm just obsessed with these. For bronzer, I'm using the Beauty Bay one in the shade Fawn. And I'm going to take some of this down my nose. What I would say at the end of the day is do your makeup however you feel comfortable doing your makeup. If you don't want to wear makeup, that is fine. If you want to wear a little bit, that is fine. If you want to wear a full face, wear a full face. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you feel confident. And at the end of the day, try not to compare yourself to people that you see online because they are probably also dealing with their own insecurities and they are probably just presenting the best version of themselves on camera. Which obviously I do most of the time. Like when I'm filming my TikToks and stuff, I have my nice lighting set up and I like it to look really bright. And also a lot of the time in the UK, it's actually needed to have artificial light because the lighting outside can be so shit. Especially in the winter. I'm gonna take this Kiko blush in the shade 
zero two. By the way, my window is more like this way. I can't get exactly central, which is why this side of my face is looking a bit darker. For my highlighter, I'm using this Nabla one in the shade Ozone. And I'm just gonna take some on my blush brush, actually. Just put a little bit on my cheeks. That's another thing as well. Highlighter is massively emphasized when you have got big bright lights on because obviously it reflects the light more. Let's put some down my nose. This is the Rare Beauty one in the shade Cool Brown. It's like the two-in-one gel and pencil thing. I'm not gonna lie, the lighting has got so bad outside. There's like a full-on windy rainstorm going on that I can't even really see what I'm doing. So what I then like to do to get some of the glowiness back in my skin, because I tend to find that if my skin is perfectly matte, then creases look more obvious. And if my skin is super glowy, then any little bumps look more obvious. But a nice sort of in-between for me is if I set my face with powder so that I know that it's all like locked and set in place, because otherwise it will just, you know, in a couple of hours, I'll be looking like an oil slick. But I like to then go in and with a mist at this stage. I'm gonna use this beauty crop one, which is the vitamin babe one. It looks like this. And even looking in the camera now, I'm like, my blush is looking really crazily heavy on this side of my face. Whereas if I had my big bright lights on, that would not even be obvious. So I'll wait for that to dry and then I know that this might seem a little bit counterproductive but I then just go back in and just powder like these cheek areas here because otherwise I get insecure about these lines that you can see there that cut sort of across my cheeks. Do you see what I mean? Like just there. But if I powder over those, it makes them a bit less visible. Okay, so here's my nose. You can still see the pores. The sides of my nose. Dry patch, peach fuzz, my forehead. And this is what the base looks like in natural lighting. The final thing that I'm gonna do is just put a bit of bronzer through my crease and along my lower lash line. Before my mascara, I'm just taking a little bit of the shade Brownies from my Super Spice palette. And I'm literally just stamping a little bit of that on my outer corners, of my lash line, sorry. And just smudging that a little bit. It just makes a very subtle difference. Putting on some Maybelline Sky High mascara, and then just using a bit of the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in the shade one. Okay, so this is my finished makeup in the natural light, which is very quickly disappearing in the afternoon but just a real close-up of my skin. So this is how everything looks in the natural light. I'm now just gonna turn on my two softbox lights that I usually use for filming. Oh my God, my eyes. You see, now when I look at my face, I just think that everything looks so washed out and I need more bronzer, more blush, more highlighter. Whereas in the natural light, it looked like more than enough. But this is with my lights pointed slightly away from me. If I actually angle them towards my face, then this is what everything looks like. And I feel like this just generally makes my skin look smoother and it kind of washes over everything. It makes the highlight look more reflective because there's more light coming in. And obviously I wish that I could film in natural lighting all the time, but it's just not possible. And when I zoom you in, can you see how I think personally, everything just looks smoother. I guess because you've not got, you've not really got shadows on your face because the light is coming from straight ahead. Whereas if the light is coming from different directions, like for example, if it's coming down, then it emphasizes texture a lot, which I will show you in a minute. But I think everything in general just looks a bit smoother. And if I turn down that brightness, I mean, you can still see the texture on my face when I get super close up and turn down the brightness, but there is a level of smoothness to my face. So now I'm going to turn off these lights and just put on my ceiling light and show you the difference. I mean, that barely does anything because it's actually, it's further back than me. Underneath a light like this, my makeup is a whole different story. It just casts the most unflattering shadows on everything. So you can see those creases in my face. You can see my smile lines. You can see the texture on my forehead. Every little bump, every little hair gets emphasized when you have light coming from above you. Every sort of like fine line gets emphasized. This sort of patch looks a lot worse and it no longer just looks like a smooth face of makeup how it did before. And let me just take you out into my hallway. So if I come a stand under one of these lights in my hallway, you can see every single bit of skin texture. So if you were doing your makeup in this kind of lighting and you're thinking, why does my face not look smooth? This is due to that light. If you have lights 
pointing at your face like that, then you can't see a whole lot. But if you are sat or stood under a light that is coming directly from above you, and if you're taking pictures under this kind of light and you're thinking, why do I not look smooth like the people on Instagram and TikTok? This is natural skin texture. 90% of people's skin looks like this if you stand under a spotlight. Every single thing is gonna have a shadow underneath it, which makes it a lot more obvious. But I can promise you now, no one is filming the TikToks in this kind of lighting, so. So if you were comparing all of this kind of thing to massive bright soft boxes that most creators use, please don't. And then here we are in my filming room with the lights back on. I know that loads of people know this already. It's not a new thing. It's not revolutionary. But because there was quite a lot of people on my TikTok and my reel and my YouTube short that didn't know this, I just thought I'd make it a whole video. And I hope that maybe you can take something away from this video. Even if you knew all of this already, it's just quite nice to have the reminder sometimes, you know? So I hope you guys are doing good. I know this was a bit of a different kind of video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. If you want to subscribe, it's free. The button is down here somewhere. I hope you guys are really good. Remember that your skin is normal and I will see you in my next video. Bye.